Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is how to make a ship in a bottle, and we make Odysseus and the Sirens. <laughs> is that fun or what? Uh, making a ship in a bottle is a little bit unique, and uh, for the most part, the biggest technique you have to learn is how to build the ship in a way so that it folds up and it can be inserted into the mouth of the bottle. And I'll show you how to do that, and I'll also show you a couple more techniques in this video. You know, I was wanting to build a ship in a bottle for quite a while, but I really didn't have a good idea. And then I ran across a can of sardines in the supermarket, La Sirena. And I was like, hey, look at that, the sirens, sardines. And I said, it made me think of Odysseus and the sirens. And I said, there you go, there's my ship in a bottle project. So um, let's launch into it. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and treasure chains, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model box, and animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. All right, the first thing we have to do is select a bottle. And um, I'm going to use this wine jug here. I like the shape and the size of it. It's very, um, I don't know how to describe it, bulbous. There's a lot of room in there for the ship. Although it does have a small uh, opening. Uh, if you're new to this, you might want to pick a bottle like this, where it has a very large mouth opening, make it much easier for you to get, to get the ship and the other various things in and out. So have fun, but, and the, the varieties are endless. You know, this is a beautiful bottle. This would make a really nice um, ship in a bottle project. I, I love the shape of that. But so uh, we've selected our bottle, just a simple bottle, and I've used Goof Off to clean off the label. And I'm also going to do a little something here. Here's a little tip for you. I get the largest drill size I could get in the, in the neck of the bottle, and then I drill the hole in a piece of wood. Now we have a little jig that we can test our stuff in. So when you're making the ship and the various parts, you can put them through that hole to see if it's going to fit in the bottle. That's kind of a neat little trick. So that's all set. Let's uh, figure out what we're going to do for the ship. I did a bunch of designs. I did some research, trying to figure out what kind of ship I wanted. You know, what, what would Odysseus be uh, seafaring on? Something like this. It's sort of like a trireme, a little bit like a Viking longship. And I did a bunch of drawings of that until I came up with some things that I, I, I liked. And, you know, this is always a fun part of the, any project for me is kind of drawing out and coming up with the ideas. See the Viking longship there? And, of course, Odysseus has got to be tied to the mast, so the mast of the ship has to be pretty big. From there, we got a good idea of what we're going to have for a ship. Now we need to try to figure out the size of the ship. So I made uh, cardboard templates. I made three different sizes and, you know, compared them against the bottle to see, you know, how, how large is it going to look? How large should we make it? See how it's going to look inside there, right? To try to get a sense for the composition inside the bottle. And, of course, you know, things are not going to fit. But that's okay. We'll work around that. So let's get started making the ship, and I am using balsa wood, and if you're familiar with balsa wood, then you know, but if you're not, look at this. That's how easy balsa wood is to work with. You can just pierce it with a pencil, just like that. It's very easy to work. You can sand it, you can cut it, you can use a knife on it. It's, it's wonderful, wonderful, very light, very easy to work wood. Um, <clears throat> and then I, you know, I sketched it out and designed it out, and first started by making the hull of the ship. So a little bit of cutting, a little bit of sanding, and we have our ship hull. You know, it's actually is a, actually a lot of work. You know, it's only a 10 or 13 minute video, but you know, there's a lot of work involved in something like this when you're working on miniature stuff. And you can, and, um, and then I cut out the various uh, parts. But are those going to fit through the mouth of the bottle? I tested them in my jig. The front will fit. The front of the ship there on the left, the back won't fit, and that's all right. I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that. That'll be another technique. Railings on the ship are simply toothpicks that I sanded down with an emery board, and I made a whole bunch of them and installed those on the ship. See the railings? Now we got to worry about <coughs> the battering ram on the front of the ship. And here's a technique I wanted to show you is, you know, uh, you know, gluing things to the ship to make it larger, to change the shape of it. And oftentimes you might want to pin it, just for strength. So that's what I did. I drilled a hole in the front of the ship, inserted the toothpick, drilled a hole in the battering ram, 
and then glued that on. So that's a technique, you know, you, it's additive. But you always have to check to make sure it's still going to fit through the mouth of the bottle. And then uh, sanded it and carved it so it becomes one whole piece. You can't even tell that there's a seam there once it's painted. And there you go, and there's the front. Very nice. And I sanded that top down a little bit so it could fit through the bottle. And added some detail. So all of this is shipbuilding. Um, you just have fun with all the, all the different kinds of details you want to do. Like I love the deck here. But always be conscious that it's got to fit into the mouth of the bottle. So always be testing it. But there you go, it's starting to look like an actual ship. And that mast I have is only temporarily glued on with just a small dab of glue, just so I could get a sense for the feel of things. And then I made some oars, and those are, are um, carved out of toothpicks. We don't want to use balsa wood for those because it's too soft. It'll just, they'll just break. Now see that back end of the ship there like that would never fit through the bottle, so I've hinged it with a piece of string so that afterwards, once it's in the bottle, then we'll pull the string and, and pull it into position. Same thing with the mast and the sail. See, we will, I'm going to fold it up like this, roll it, fold it, and turn it sideways like this, attach that to the ship, and then insert it into the bottle. And once it's inside, then we pull the string to bring it up to its upright position, like that. You know, so that's the biggest technique when it comes to um, ship, uh, you know, ship in a bottle building. Now for um, Odysseus, I'm using a material called uh, Procreate. It is a two-part epoxy resin. You mix the two parts together and then you've got a couple of hours to sculpt something. And then it will set, it'll harden like plastic. So I, I made this little fake beam here on a cork, sculpted out Odysseus, painted him, and he's ready to go. And then I will remove that and, and put it onto the ship. And also the sirens, I made two sirens. I did the same thing, made a wire armature, sculpted them, painted them, I'll remove them from the cork and then install them into the scene in the bottle. So let's move on to the bottle. Made a little um, stand out of foam board, so we can now start to work on it. And the first thing we have to do is add water. And I am using something called Amazing Super Marvelosa. It is a two-part clear casting resin. It's really easy to use, really simple stuff, but it does get hot. And there's some kind of a chemical reaction going on. But you mix equal amounts of it together, add a drop or two of blue food coloring, and stir it up. So now that those two parts are mixed, the chemical process starts, and then in a few hours it will harden like clear plastic. So I poured those into the bottle like this. See how I have a cardboard tube there? And there you go. So now I set that overnight to dry and uh, to set, and I put a fan on it to keep it cool because that stuff does get hot. I was afraid that the bottle would crack, but it didn't. It didn't crack. So now that is solid like plastic. And here's the big thing. Here's what you've been watching for, right? You've been waiting for this. Our ship is built. See how the mast can be pulled with the strings, and that tailpiece can be pulled with the strings. So that's what happens, that's what you do, that's one of the big keys to shipbuilding when it comes to installing it in a bottle, is you fold everything over so it's open and it can fit in the bottle and apply glue to the parts that will um, hold it in the upright position. So what happens here is, so this little feet, I'll show you. So I folded it all down like this and inserted it into the bottle. Look at that, that's beautiful. See, and then I will pull on those strings, bringing everything into the upright position, and the glue that I put in there will hold everything in the upright position. So you pull the strings into the, everything's upright, and leave the strings while everything sets, and then once the, the glue has set 
and everything's um, locked in position, you can remove the strings. But you know, and this uh, this took some effort on my part. I actually have a lot of video footage of this, but I edited a lot of it out. Getting the bottle just right, getting the ship in the right position, just where I wanted it, getting everything. It, it takes some effort. I could have used more strings, but look, see, you pull on that string. So now the ship is pretty much done, and I'm happy with it. I put a uh, very high tacked glue in there and then moved the ship to the position I wanted it. So now the ship is glued in exactly where I want it for the composition of the uh, bottle. And then get everything else right. So I got the sails right, everything's looking good the way I want it. Everything's in position and then I can remove those strings. So now the final thing here when it comes to the ship is the little oar set. And here's another technique that I wanted to show you. You can still add stuff to the ship after it's in the bottle. And that's what I'm doing here. So I put a high tacked glue in there. And then got that in there and glued it to the side of the ship just where I wanted it. And that took some maneuvering. It took a while for me to get it just right. So now we tinker with the water. Adding waves. And that's a heavy gloss gel. And what that does is, however you put it, you dab it on and it forms like a wave, it'll, it'll dry that way. It won't settle like the water did, it won't get flat, it'll stay bumpy, which is nice. So yeah, so the oar is making a stir in the water in the front of the ship. So let's finish this thing off. We add the sirens. I'll just show you one here, the first one. And glue them in position. Odysseus is looking at her, and she's calling to him. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm glad I found, I came up with this idea, because I've been wanting to, like I said, I've been wanting to do a ship in a bottle for a while. I just didn't know exactly what. I was, well, there's common ships in a bottle, but I like this whole theme idea. This is a very specific theme that a lot of people have heard of, you know, Odysseus and the sirens. And there they are, the two sirens, and Odysseus is tied to the mast of his ship, so he can't jump in the water and drown himself. Um, thanks for watching my video. If you make a ship in a bottle, be, La Serena, uh, be sure to send me a picture. I'll send you a certificate of contribution.